What's up, YouTube? Um, this is me showing everyone how to do a manual boost controller and then, in turn, make a dual stage boost controller out of that. I recently um, finally got the boost solenoid that I ordered from China, which is like 18 bucks. Um, and that was, I mean, really cheap. So in total, for like a dual stage boost controller, we're looking at, you know, right around 35, 40 bucks, which is pretty cheap. Um, so again, this is kind of a DIY on how to do that. It's not Subaru specific. Um, this is the manual boost controller. This is what we're going to be, um, going to for, for higher boost. So this is just a, a brass fitting, brass fitting, like a, and then a coupler in the middle with a spring and a ball bearing inside. And I'll go over exactly on how to make that. And then this would be the three boat, the three port boost solenoid. Um, this you can pick up again on eBay. I'll post a link to it. It comes with these brass fittings. So really the only extra thing you would need is possibly some hose. I'll show you exactly how to wire that in. It comes with two wires coming out of it as well, one for ground, obviously, and one for power for this solenoid to be on or off. And uh, I'll show you how to actually wire that up. Um, currently, I have it wired to my cruise switch because I lost cruise control with this uh, with this conversion that I did for uh, NA to turbo. Um, so I, that switch was just not doing anything. So now when I hit the cruise button, I go into high boost, which is... 9.5 psi and just over 9 and then when I hit when it's off of cruise con cruise control um, wastegate boost which is a, for this TDO4 is 7 psi so I switch in between uh, it's pretty convenient um, I'll go over how to make the manual boost controller here I run a diagram um, it's easier than kind of taking it apart and I already have that one set up so you would need two brass nipples uh, I think they're one eighth um, in terms of the the ends coming out and then uh, a brass coupler to kind of that these can screw into. That should be really easy to find. Spring and ball bearing, also pretty easy to find. You can get those at Home Depot, Erase Hardware. Um, and basically you want a, a ball bearing that will fit inside that hole and kind of block that hole. Um, so you can just bring it over and test it out. And then a spring that would obviously fit over that ball bearing and not go, you know, over it, but kind of be able to push it without you know, um, the ball bearing actually going inside the spring. Next we have, this is how to wire it, or basically how to plumb it in. So if you just wanted to make a boost controller without doing the other steps that I've gone over for like the dual stage stuff, you would basically just, and again, put it together like this, the ball bearing side, the side with the ball bearing, takes from the boost source, and then the side without the ball bearing goes to the wastegate. And to do this, you're going to have to do some trial and error. So you're definitely going to need to, you can't just hook this up and it's good to go, like, uh, put it pretty loose to begin with and then kind of tighten it up as you go. Um, because if you put it really tight to begin with, what will happen is you'll run way too high boost and then you'll have to loosen it up slowly. But you want to kind of keep it pretty loose and then tighten it, go for a run, tighten it, see where your PSI is at, tighten it, and then get it, dial it into where you need it. Um, and then I, I kind of mark it off with a marker to make sure that's, and then I write like what the actual boost is that it's set at um, to kind of make it, you know, um, so I, in, in case I forget. Uh, again, that, that can be made for really cheap. That's just the manual boost controller aspect of it. That can be made for dirt cheap for, I think I made that for like 18 bucks. Um, and it's, I, I mean, you know what you're getting as opposed to stuff you make it on eBay or Amazon. And the cheapest one you're going to find is probably like 20, 30 bucks. But A, you have to, you know, wait for it. I'm kind of impatient. And B, you know what you're getting with this. It's pretty much going to be the same design that you get for those really, really cheap ones anyway. Okay, so now the um, the electronic portion of it. This is a little bit more complex, but really not, not too much. Okay, so this would be the three, the three uh, port boost solenoid. Um, obviously the wire, you can switch it up any way you want, but one goes to ground, it doesn't matter which one, and one goes to positive, so a switch would be, you know, you can turn on and off. Um, so that's, I mean, you should know how to do that. I'm not really going to go in depth on how to, you know, wire it. That's pretty easy. Again, either one can be used. So first, you have, on, on the one that I purchased, there's, they're actually numbered. The ports are one, three, and two, or one, two, three. Um, so two is actually, for, for the application we're doing, two is going to be from the boost source. So this is going to be coming off the turbo. Um, and then with no power, it's going to go directly to three. Um, but with power on, it's going to go to one. So obviously when, when power's on, we want it going to the manual boost controller and then air coming through here to the wastegate. 
easy peasy. And then from the boost source, again, with no power, it just goes directly to three. This is just like a, a, a vacuum T. Um, so you'll know that, you know, power will be coming through here. You, you're not worried about it going back through here. And even if it does, air does go all the way back to here, which, I mean, it won't, but this will be blocked off anyway, so air will stop here and vice versa. This will be blocked off, so air would stop here when it comes through. It would actually go this way. So again, that's, that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy. Um, it's very convenient. Before, uh, when I did this build before, I actually just had the manual boost controller and I would like, I kept it in my glove box and when I wanted to go to iBoost, I would kind of put it in and maybe go for a run just to play around a little bit. Um, but this is obviously a lot more convenient and I was able to do it for about 35, 40 bucks. So um, again, I'll post a link to, to the um, three port bus solenoid, but uh, yeah. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, just feel free to comment.